But I do hope that the residents, the taxpayers, the people who have the regular homes, they come to this microphone and they voice their opinion. They both voice their opinion. I do not feel that because you have, because you wish to keep a commission post, you go to the podium. Because you want to get a contract with the city, you go to the podium. But there are many people in this audience who have come here for years who are not looking for anything from this city. They come because they love the city. And they've come here for years and years and years. And new people are coming. And so I just like to say that to everyone. I hope everyone drives home safely. But the way things are today is the way it's always been in England. And it's a great thing because it's democracy, it's community, and action. Thank you very much, and good night. Uh, yes, um, actually, I will respond to the major topic of the evening having to do with rules of decorum. Actually, it's the chair of the meeting who sets the tone. It's the chair who sets the tone. And uh, we have a chair now who interrupts people at the podium constantly. That, that's contrary to our rules of decorum. Interrupts members of this body, contrary to the rules of decorum. Uh, and it says he, his role as chair is to protect the deliberative process, which is absolutely contrary to what he does. He interrupts and uh, stops the deliberative process on a regular basis. Uh, it, it appears that the time limits are more important than what's being discussed in the fact being presented to the public. Uh, it also states very clearly that any member up here who's speaking should confine himself or herself to the question under debate, avoiding personal attacks and indecorous language. Well, that's thrown out the window. Personal attacks are made on a regular basis by at least three members of this body. Uh, for whatever reason, the intent of the discussion seems to now center around putting down other people's remarks, putting down their comments, and attempting to just ridicule and demean them, knowing that they cannot come back and respond. Uh, even our parliamentary procedure states clearly that a member must confine their remarks to the question, avoiding personalities. Uh, if we would do that, then those of you who, out, who are out there who would like the meetings to run more smoothly, be more businesslike, that is exactly what would occur. They would be businesslike. They would be businesslike. So I would uh, plead to the chair to follow parliamentary procedure, follow our rules of decorum, don't interrupt the public, don't count. You oftentimes tell the people that they're wrong. Once again, they have a right to say what they want to say, right, wrong, or indifferent. They can say it. We, we are not to comment on what they're saying out there. And uh, you, you talk about being respectful of the speaker's mayor. You've actually told one member of the public who was criticizing you, which is permitted under the law. In fact, the law demands that the public have a right to criticize members of the body. You call them un-American at a meeting for exercising their rights under the law. So once again, I would ask that we stick to the merits. I should be able to say what I want to say. Councilman Stevens, speak, ask his questions. Each of us, ask our questions, speak to the item without having other people come behind, not for the purpose of putting forth their point of view, but purely for the purpose of ridiculing and demeaning a colleague in the legislative body. That's pretty outrageous conduct. So why don't we try to really work together? Why don't we just try next week, one meeting? Let's see if we can go from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock and just stick to the merits of the issue, the any attempt to demean someone else's comments or to ridicule someone else's comments. Let's just stick to presenting your own points of view and how refreshing uh, that would be. Thank you. Well, thank you. I, for one, would love to believe that that was possible. Um, <coughs> there was an inference that, that clarification on certain questions are, are insulting as comments. And the truth is that, uh, you know, when you're prepared to uh, make a motion, vote on a particular item, you've more than likely gone through every question you've asked the city manager if you have one. And, you know, if somebody comes up and characterizes a particular item as either wrong or uh, just quite frankly uh, as, as the wrong thing to do, then uh, if you plan to vote it through, and your role is to clarify what those questions are. You can't just leave a question in the air because the public does not have the ability uh, that we do on a weekly and daily basis to ask staff and
and get those clarifications? Those are questions that we would leave in, in limbo. And that would not be fair to the community. It wouldn't be fair to our meeting here. So that will continue. Uh, that being said, you know, the democratic process is a great process. We see it every election season here. This is nothing different. I expect it to get even further down closer to the election. You know, folks should be allowed to come up here and say whatever they want to say, uh, whether they agree with us or disagree with us, and uh, not feel uh, bullied, quite frankly. You know, we, you know, we are here to listen. Uh, it's okay, we don't always agree. But that's what this platform is for, and more than likely our, our democratic process. Now, the mayor alluded to earlier a, a lobbying trip to Washington. I was present as well as uh, Councilman Franklin. I know he'll talk about that. Uh, we were there. It was excellent in terms of progress. I will say that in the past 10 years, I think it was literally the most productive, it was the most tiring. We had meetings for two full days. I'll talk about some that I attended, the Department of Transportation and the Tiger Brands in regard to Century Boulevard. I mean, not only uh, did we get guidance, but we sat with the right people. Uh, they were very happy to hear the progress that's being made in the city uh, and is basically going to give us as much advice as we can to be at the top of the possibility list for these Tiger <coughs> Brands for Century Boulevard. Uh, I, I can't uh, say enough. Uh, how much uh, they are willing to help the city of Inglewood just based on the progress we've made. The Cox Grant uh, extension, uh, three years ago, uh, we made the request that instead of using the money for hiring officers, uh, we would be able to extend those those uh, grants, and that's something that's going to come up. And just uh, briefly, uh, Mayor, the FAA was something we spoke about. And um, I just wanted to say that uh, two years ago, I was at the meeting where they completely were distraught by our program here. And not only did they completely do a 180, uh, but as the mayor alluded to earlier, they committed $6 million with the possibility of another $6 million, aside from the 30-some-odd uh, million that the mayor worked on in the last couple of months. It's been an amazing trip. I have some more, but I'll save it for next week. Thank you very much. Yes. Let me uh, pick up on some of the comments made earlier because I've heard that there is a new wave of breath of fresh air. Um, again, I've been here 10 years, so I look forward to seeing that change on this diet. This now speaks with the heart of the And if individuals want to change, it starts with them. And so as long as we're willing to work and address the issues and stop this bantering in the first few nights, I think it's a great move for the city. I also want to identify that those individuals that believe that they have already contributed to this city, that they know they're doing the right thing, should should honor what they've done. And if in fact you are in fact having access to city properties or equipment, then in turn, if you like what you see in the mirror, more power to you. The problem is these taxpayers will not forget. The other thing I want to raise is that I want to thank the uh, uh, Baptist Pastors and Ministers Conference that was here uh, earlier uh, this week. Uh, they had the, the topic matter, the word is great. And in fact, uh, they all talked about faith, and faith is now, faith is present. And along that same line, we moved to uh, Washington, D.C. And other meetings that I attended, I want to put you all identify collectively. They clearly identified there's no earmarks around anymore. You will fight for these grants. And you will fill out those applications. But more importantly, because they saw the new era, someone said, or the new movement of the city, 